phone so I can tag along. If not, not a big deal. There we go. We're on. All right. It says somebody's yep. got their phones on. We're up. All right. How's it going, everybody? Good. How are you? What's going on? Welcome to, I, I'm going to pull a number right out of my hat here, Keith. Welcome to week number 20, 26 of Boating Tips Live. I don't know. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're getting th up there. Halfway through the year, right? We are. We're having a good time. We're here and we've got some more special guests this week. So got uh, Captain Paul and uh, Danelle Gage here and they are with Reeling Freedom. So we're going to be talking everything tournament fishing today. So that could mean something different wherever you're at, whatever you're fishing for. But but you guys do something pretty special, and you know, just in a way, to give hey, them back. Hey. So, so looks like Nick's kind of freezing up there. So, uh, go ahead and uh, Danelle, go ahead and uh, <clears throat> introduce yourself and kind of tell us a little bit about you and your background. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, privileged to be able to come on and talk a little bit about what we do. Um, I do work with Marine Max. Uh, that's how I kind of got involved a little bit about being able to come on here. I work with the vacation side. Um, I came on in 2017 with Marine Max um, on the vacation side. We offer um, luxury uh, dream vacations to the BVIs. You have over 60 cruising destinations that you can visit over there. Um, so if you want some more information, I can help you on that side. We're super excited because the BVI's is opening December 1st. So awesome. I know we are pretty excited about that because it's been a long uh, few months on rescheduling vacations. But with um, the Rolling Freedom Foundation, uh, we stood that up in 2016. Um, my husband spent 22 years in the Marine Corps, and he is a 100% disabled veteran. Um, from all the tours that he did. Um, Paul, do you want to touch a little bit on that as well? And I can share a little bit more as well. Sure. Okay, how we got hey, yeah, so, hey, yeah, so Captain Paul Gage here. Uh, like she said, I'm a retired Marine. I had served 22 years in the Marine Corps, um, originally from Newport, Vermont, up in the Canadian border. Um, joined the Marine Corps in 1992, uh, officially retired in 2014 down here to Florida. And uh, we started the Railing Freedom Foundation around 2016. So it's pretty exciting. Really quick story on how we actually stood the foundation up. Sure. Um, we won't spend too much time with it, but we were blessed to buy our boat to go offshore fishing. Um, we kept seeing a lot of veterans on the side, and we just kept offering to take veterans offshore. Um, about six months after that, I said, why don't we make this a nonprofit? Short story. Um, here we are, uh, what, almost four or five years later. And so we stood the foundation up. Um, and basically we believe that it's therapy to get out on the water and have a little bit of, um, just relief, I guess, when you get out there. I mean, you guys are boaters, you all know about boating and what it's like to get out there and just have some stress relief. So water is therapy. So we get veterans and first responders out on the water. And that's why we ended up getting into the tournament fishing as well. Um, we take the veterans out, we put them on the boat and see what we can do with it. Yeah, I agree, man. We kind of talked about this in another episode. We get out in the water. I mean, with me, you can just feel your blood pressure drop. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's something about it. You get out there and you get away from all the stressors on land and, and doing all that. Um, so how many like boats do you guys have? Or if, if we got captains on here or people want to get involved and, and how, how can, how can we on the outside looking in help you guys out? Yeah. So we have our own boat. Uh, we have one. Um, we also have Captain Gene Hammond, who is on our board. He is a, uh, a U.S. Coast Guard certified captain as well, and he's got his own boat. So we primarily run on those two boats. But we have captains all the way from St. Pete all the way up to Hudson that, that will volunteer their time. If we can't keep up with the, the workflow of putting people on the water, all I got to do is make a phone call, and these guys will, uh, will jump up and put them on the water. We pay for all their expenses, so it's not like awesome. the captain's doing it for free. Um, because we don't want anything for free. We want to, uh, to pull our own weight, but they do donate their time and we'll pay all their expenses and, and everything for, for that day for them to be on the water. So we get a lot of help and we have no problem getting help. That's for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. We've teamed up with, um, Hubbard's Marina. They take veterans out for us. Um, Dylan's a great guy. He does a lot of work <clears> with <throat> us. Uh, we had a, a veteran on a wheelchair last week on Greg Leonard's boat. He's got a handicap accessible boat. Uh, with a wheelchair accessible. And so we had them out last week and a Marine, he literally, I mean, 
he, amputee, I mean, two amputee, double amputee, is that what it was, Paul? I he mean, was either a double or triple, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just great stuff. I mean, it's just, it's it's really neat to see and they watch their faces and their expressions when they get out there. So, but that's, that's what we do. We just have a lot of, like you said, we have a lot of captains that work with us. I mean, the idea is to get more boats, but we just, you know, we're, we're fairly new. We're, you know, we're four or five years old growing into this and it just keeps getting bigger. So. That's awesome, man. You got everybody to kick in and help out and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Speaking of Dylan Hubbard, did you happen to see his kind of his live walkthroughs yesterday there at the pass? So no, I didn't see yesterday, no. all, all the sand is oh, wash, no. washing around the jetty there. So the friendly fisherman, his boats are at, literally on the beach right now. So oh, missed that one. Some, yeah, something's got to be done to help help them out and all those businesses there at the pass. Oh, you know, my that's good. The whole thing's kind of like silting in over there. I'll make sure I watch it when we get done. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. He was on a couple of different times yesterday. Mm. So as far as veterans and stuff like that, uh, what's the best way for them or what's the criteria and stuff like that to, to get with you guys? So we don't discriminate against anybody. Um, we're not to the point yet where we have to do that. We're, we're blessed that we have a lot of help. And we have a lot of captains so we can pretty much take everybody fishing. But um, they can go on our website, reelingfreedom.com to sign up. And uh, we ask that, you know, if you have your own boat, you know, if you can afford to get on the water, then, you know, please don't take a seat from anybody else. But um, but if you just want to stay on the water with Reeling Freedom, go on to reelingfreedom.com and sign up and we'll contact you when we have a trip. We try to do a trip once a quarter with uh, with Captain Dylan Hubbard. And uh, we also have a couple of other charter companies that help us out, too, as well. But Dylan's our number one to go to. But we'll we'll book a whole boat once a quarter and take out 40, 50 guys or, and gals. And um, and take them out. We try to do about 200 trips a year total, so we're we're on the water as much as we can be. Wow! Yeah. You offer it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. <laughs> oh no, I was just saying. Do you guys do the inshore stuff too with some of your guides up and down the coast? We do. Most of the guys that we use are all inshore guides. Uh, myself and Captain Gene Hammond, we do offshore as well as Captain Dylan. But going offshore, as you know, is expensive. It's not right. a cheap trip. Um, for the cost of an offshore trip, I can do four or five inshore trips for veterans. So we do a lot of inshore trips. Most of our trips are inshore. Awesome. So do you guys have a, a my reading it here? There's a tournament coming up, I think in March. Uh, yes, we do our warrior shootout in the beginning of March every year. And, um, it's to raise money and bring awareness to PTSD. Um, every year it gets bigger and bigger. And, uh, we're having the tournament at the uh, Bay Pines Marina down in uh down by bay pines by the va hospital uh dave travis the owner of the marina there is uh is uh, letting us do it for free there he doesn't charge us anything and it's just a great venue you can bring your boats in there uh wheelchairs can get around everywhere it's just a great event and honor off road comes down there every year and helps run it with us so that's our annual tournament we do ourselves and um everybody's welcome to come it's always a great turnout mm -hmm. outstanding so speaking of tournaments um do you guys fish the kind of the local ones around here? We do. We try to fish every tournament we can. Uh, we're not experts by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but we have a good time. We get people on the water, and we uh, we do pretty good. Yeah. Cool. What's the name good. of your boat? Uh, it says Reeling Freedom right down the side of it. You yeah. can't miss oh, it. Well, yeah. that makes it's sense. Yeah. It's the most patriotic boat on the water. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we our tournaments basically, you know, we started tournament fishing was to way to basically raise awareness for the foundation. And now we just we we run with uh Wild West, all the Wild West tournaments and James and Jenny. Um they armed anglers, am I saying that right? I always Angler say, Armory. I always say Angler. backwards. Yeah, we run um with them a lot. Um they they support us heavily with the foundation, um, whatever fish they sell to the market comes to the foundation. So they, they're great. I mean, they're amazing people. So. And one of so our biggest sponsors, Angler Armory. Yeah. That's awesome. So actually this year, I know they've got an inshore and an offshore division. So, mm -hmm. you know, like a lot of times the Angler Armory or the, the wild west, you know, is a lot of the big guns, you know, them guys that, you know, crank up and run out to the grounds or the elbow or here or there or go to clear down the Tortugas or what whatnot. Mm -hmm. But yep. now you got the inshore division, which I think is like kind of like the king of the beach or whatever. They gave you some boundaries, right? All right. It's a 30 right. mile boundary West. Right. So I think it's North, South and West as far as the, the 30 miles, I, I believe something like that. Yeah, pretty much. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's an awesome tournament. It's, it allows the little guys to go out and play, you know. The the yeah. big guys, you know, they're running 100, 100 miles. They have, you know, triple 450 hours on it. They're going 100 miles an hour. And then you got someone <clears> with a little 25, 30-foot boat. They just can't compete. So so right. why bother even play? Well, uh, so you know. Jenny well, and James designed it so that everybody can play. Yep. No, it makes sense. But, I mean, you guys are in, have been doing this for a while, fishing-wise. I mean, you know as well as I do. There's a lot of money that's come out of inside Tampa Bay, right out here where I am. You know, oh, yeah. God, God knows, you know, the 90 foot hole at Egmont, who knows how much money's come off the peaks. I mean, that's just, that's, that's money, you know, every time. So, I mean, there's a lot of places, you know, those guys maybe go, they run 120, 150 miles and turn around and run back. But a guy in a 17 or 18 foot Dauntless can be sitting right out there in a ditch and, you know, put a 50 pound fish in the box. I believe the winning fish from King of the Beach last year was caught right by the flagpole. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's a hundred thousand dollar fish right there. Yep. It's, you know, where the bait is and stuff like that. I mean, and I know a guy, you know, out there trolling the blue bomber, you know, and everybody else is out there, <laughs> you know, live baiting and chumming and doing all that stuff. But, you know, you're just dragging hardware and fish swims by and, you know, the numbers it's aren't probably going to be there. Damn right, you know, but that's what that's part of tournament fishing, right? That's the whole the the part of it, you know, the anticipation and the preparation, and then you know, you go out and lay your cards down and see what happens. Yep, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you you guys got any good stories from tournaments or or anything that you've been in and doing? Oh, I guess we could tell you all kinds of stories. You know, we've got <clears throat> we got time lost, to kill, so go ahead. We we've we've lost rods over shore, we've lost overboard we've lost gopros overboard and we've lost gaffs overboard uh last year uh, one of one of the first trips out i wasn't on the boat but it was on the other reeling freedom boat um one of the guys in the boat the uh, first thing in the morning they got a tuna and uh he reached down with the gaff hooked the tuna and the tuna ran away with the gaff so they uh (laughs) they fished all day long without a gaff uh pretty funny but uh we've we've done all kinds of crazy stuff out there we Mm -hmm. have a good time you just never know you really never know one of the, um, I think there's a picture in there, one of the biggest kingfishes that was caught on the boat. I'm holding it, but I didn't catch that kingfish. Was We were actually bottom fishing. And Lauren caught that kingfish. I mean, it's a team yep. effort when those things come in. And it takes, you know, 30, 40, sometimes an hour to get those things in. And she was on the lightest reel. I think it had 20-pound tests on it. And the tiniest hook that you could ever imagine and that kingfish, um, it was huge. And we got it in the boat. I'm not really sure how, but it was just hooked just right. And it was one of the biggest ones that we've caught on the boat. I think that, how many of you think that, what, did we lose Paul? Yeah, but Paul. he'll come back. He'll come back. But that, I mean, he he was huge. I mean, he was one of the biggest kingfishes that we've caught on the boat. So but it's always a battle. So you just never know what you're going to run to when you're out there fishing. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the fun thing, you know, like with yeah. the kingfish and the light drags, Yeah. you know, cause, cause like you said, you probably just had that little treble hook upside yeah. the face or something. Yeah. That's why, that's why you can't lock them down or get on them too hard because yeah. you know, they're going to end up pulling out of there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then, you know, so that tuna, that was a bycatch. I mean, yeah. you're out there fishing for kingfish, but yeah. it's like, that's a bonus. It's like, Hey, cool. How's that? You know, you got yourself a tuna. Yeah. Um, couple different times we've been out there where we've hooked um sailfish you know by accident so i mean that's a cool thing and you know at the peaks on this one and you know all of a sudden the fish is taking off and then it's jumping you're in a tournament and it's like what do you want to do you are going to cut him off it's like ah oh, hell no let's go we're you know so we can just let, let him keep on going yeah yeah you know you but it's, last yeah. year last year at the high new tournament we were out there fishing we caught a mahi two permit uh one kingfish we caught, wow. a, uh, we, we caught like a smorgasbord of different fish. It was, it was insane. And uh, th- that mahi must've been lost because he shouldn't have been around that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's, it's weird too. I know, I know a guy a couple of years ago, I think it was King of the beach. They ended up sixth or seventh or something like that. Didn't have any bait. They were sabiki and bait out like near the checkerboard or somewhere out that way and hooked a grunt and just flipped the grunt back out and, Lo and behold, who would have thought, you know, big old monster kingfish, you know, eats the thing and, and takes off them. You know, it's, it's, that guy's name's Matt. I'm going, there's no way. He goes, I'm telling you the truth. That's what it was. 
Yeah, we did one of those last year too. I think the picture is up there somewhere. Um, I had Amy Lockhart on the boat and I had a flat line off the back of the boat with a, a circle hook with a grunt on it. And that line screamed. And so I, I fought it for a few minutes, gave her the line and she reeled it in. It was about, it was probably a 60 pound kingfish and it actually wrapped around the anchor line. So I grabbed the rod and, and wrapped it underneath and around the line two or three times to get it out. And uh, we got it in the boat. It was hooked perfect in the cheek. And uh, we pulled in that 60 pound kingfish off of a flat line with a grunt. So oh, you, just, darn. you just never know. Our biggest kingfish we've ever caught on the boat were from sitting still on a flat line. So with a grunt. Know. With a grunt. Yes, with For a grunt. Real. <laughs> yeah. For real. The one that so. was down in the Keys was with a grunt too on that light line. We were jigging for, uh, yeah. for yellowtail with that one. Yeah. 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 Well, see, I learned some here instead of going out two days ahead, three days ahead and pinning up all those big blue runners mm -hmm. and, yeah. and all that stuff. Go, right, let's, let's go out and go grunt fishing and throw one out behind a boat and uh, I'll tell you, you happens, right? I will go yeah. out yeah. the whole week and get blue runners and do everything yeah. that you're supposed to do. But, you know, I think, I think that's what we're going to do this time. I, I think we're just going to go out there and anchor up and uh, throw some grunts out the back and, and see what happens. My, my team's watching, so I'm sure they're, they're skin and crawling right now. <laughs> they're like, oh, heck no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey. So switch, let's switch gears here just okay. a little bit to see if we get some more questions or get some questions in here Okay. Um, with the Marine Max vacation. So mm -hmm. I was just on a delivery today Okay. and and I just found out from you earlier that we're opening back up. Mm -hmm. um, I can get you the info for these folks. They're really interested, but what's uh, like down in the BBIs, mm -hmm. the Marine Max vacation charters and stuff, what's all entailed in that involved in that? Right. So um, basically when you, you call to get a quote. We'll we'll get you all set up and get you down there. Um, it's just it's really just a dream vacation. I mean, you just if you want to get down there and do something different, we'll get you down there. Uh, you get on a, a boat. You can spend six to average charter is about six to seven days down there. Um, you can have a captain. You can do a bare boat. A bare boat charter is when you captain the boat yourself. Um, if you have the experience of chartering or or you know driving a boat, you won't need a captain. We do have a boating resume on our website that you can fill out. Um, it takes maybe 10 minutes. And if you're an experienced boater, you'll know how to fill it out. And we know when we look at it, if, if you know how to boat and we'll determine if you need a captain or not. Um, once we determine that, we'll say, okay, you're eligible for this size boat. Um, we have four different boat sizes. We have a 36, which is a two cabin. We have a 44, which is a three cabin a 48, which is a four cabin. And we have a brand new boat that will be available for charter officially in February, which is the brand new 54 foot five cabin, which awesome. is a beautiful boat. We're so excited about it. And believe it or not, it's booking out so fast. And I think we're going to have a total of four of them as of right now. It starts out with three and then we add the fourth one. So if you want to get some more information, uh, you can go to the website. Um, you can email me directly. It's danielle.gage at marinemax.com as well. And I can get you a quote, send you a brochure. Um, I have a lot of great email um, stuff I can email you as well about the vacations. There's 60 different cruising grounds. There's snorkeling, scuba diving, um, a lot of great beaches, uh, beach bars, uh, great restaurants. There's just so much to do over there. You could spend, you could spend a week to two over there on these boats and just have a great time so that's that's it's awesome so like i know like the 48 aquila mm -hmm. and these are aquilas that you're talking about yep the 48 has got like four identical state rooms correct so and you've got your own personal head mm -hmm. in each one so you get you go down there with a couple other couples or there's four couples you've got your own private space you know then you come up then up on midship on the deck you got your galley and your living area and all that and then you've got the bridge up top where you're going to run the boat but you don't have to worry about anchoring. There's mooring balls out there. Correct. So you literally, you know, drive the boat up. They've got charts. Where everything's laid out. Your itinerary, I believe, is going to be laid out yeah, where you're going to go. And we do. We have sample itineraries that we can provide you. We can, help, right. we can help you plan a vacation if you've never been. We actually have, um, for 2021, we have three flotillas for like a first time uh, family or group going that has never been. If you want to go with a group of people that you know just for 
to make you feel comfortable if, if you want to go with a group we do offer flotillas um one of the cool things about our boats is we have water makers on them a lot of boats don't offer that so you don't have to watch your water usage because it'll just constantly make that water for you that's one of my favorite parts on the boats and then the open fly bridges you don't see a lot of that on the boats from you know being up top and to go grab that right. marine ball that is just one of the other the great spots on the boat and then they've got dinghies on them as well right yep. so you can go yep. into the beaches and mm -hmm. and all that yeah and then i've heard too the restaurants you know you could if you wanted to eat on the boat you know, some of them, they'll come out to you. They can bring you your dinner onto the boat and, mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, and then there's so many great spots to eat. I always tell everybody when they do their provisioning that um, don't over-provision. Do your breakfast, light lunches, maybe a couple dinners because there's so many great restaurants that you're going to want to eat at. And the pricing is not over-expensive. It's pretty good. So it's, 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 you know, 10 to $20 a plate for food over there. So it's not horrible. Yeah, BBI so you guys, is very, very reasonable. All the, yeah. it's so it's so cheap down there. It's crazy. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So you guys watching this now, and then you're gonna, you know, it's gonna go live on eternity on here on the internet and on YouTube <laughs> and Facebook and all that. So hit Danielle, Danielle, Danielle up, and yeah. uh, you know she can get you set up and get the boat provisioned and get your trip all set and coordinated and all that. So. Do we have any questions out there? Let's what we see. Let me go scroll over here. <laughs> All you guys watching, we got a bunch of people watching. So kind of hush, jump hush, in with Jack. your questions. And yeah, some people, that's funny. Hush, hush, Jack, Jack. My dog is barking in the background. I'm not really sure <laughs> why. I apologize for that. <laughs> what kind of dog's Jack, Jack? He's a miniature pincher. Okay. So I'm not really sure why. I apologize. I just barky. <laughs> does he like the boat? Um, oh, yeah. Yes, he does. <clears throat> he loves the boat. Doesn't yeah. like water though. That's perfect. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, Keeps him in the boat. Yeah, he does. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. And the 36s. Yeah. We're all just mentioning on here. The 36s, they do have uh, twin outboards. So that's really nice. So the, yeah, the 36s are faster boats. Oh yeah, they are. They'll go a little quicker. Yep. Get around a little quicker. And we've uh, actually changed them up a little bit. Um, so all the new ones coming in, they all have a little bit more of a closed concept. They're more of a cruising boat now because the ones we had were open. So now they have nice sliders on the back. So that's really nice. They have curtains in them. And so they're pretty. I've got a 32 delivering uh, Wednesday out of here. Oh. So 32 Aquila. Oh, so Lisa Harrison's Aquila. got a question there. What's on your bucket list of fish to catch? Oh, I haven't caught a sailfish yet. So that's the one I want to get. Yeah, I have to so, say a sailfish or a rooster fish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. So I've got the sailfish. Don't have the rooster <clears> fish, but got a swordfish. We caught some swordfish. We fished the loop tournament, uh, you know, a few years ago and uh, out there at nighttime and get the swords. But, uh, you know, probably a marlin. I haven't done, I haven't got that yet. And so it would be nice in one of those tournaments. Yeah, that, to, would, be, <laughs> that would be amazing. I would. Absolutely love to do that. And um, Nick just asked if we'll be at King of the Beach. Absolutely be at King of the Beach. We never miss King of the Beach. So, November 7th. Yep. And then um, with um, James and Jenny, we have, um, it's, I think it's going to be in January. Do you remember the date off the top of your head for uh, Wild West? Well, you have, that, you have two. the Angler Armory um, Wild West is going on the 24th of this month is the first one. Then there's another one in November, I believe. Well, there's Super one in January cool. for the seafood. When you know where they do the seafood tournament every year or festival every year, we'll be set up down there for that one as well. We always set up whenever we do the tournaments too for the foundation, we always set up a big booth for all of our merchandise and, you know, just to help keep the awareness up as well for um, PTSD and suicide awareness. So whenever we have these big tournaments, we're always set up as well selling our merchandise. So Michael Thompson just jumped in and he goes, uh, where is down there? So if we're talking about the reeling freedom and stuff, that's like Pinellas County, West mm -hmm. Central Florida. Uh, we're basically, you know, Clearwater, St. Pete area. Um, but then as far as the Marine Max vacations, mm -hmm. that's down in the British Virgin Islands. Correct. So that's where, where that's all taking place. Yes, correct. Yes. Absolutely. So have heard rumors about people catching sailfish while king fishing. Any truth to that? Yeah, we were just talking about yep. that earlier there, Captain Nick. 
So the yeah, I've seen quite a I few mean, come out of the uh, out here lately. People running out of St. Pete. I've seen a lot of people catch the sailfish out there. Yeah, long shipping channel. I mean, yeah, I've caught I've caught them in the ditch, uh, just out past the Whistler, out at the peaks, uh, a little bit north of there too. So I mean, it's 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 an awesome bycatch. I mean, I think I've seen more and more and more of it. I mean, years ago I can think it was really rare, but. Uh, you know, now, you know, maybe it's just because social media, you see a lot more, you know, mm -hmm. posts and stuff. But, uh, you know, every spring seems like, OK, you know, there's a pretty decent little sailfish bush. Yeah, there's been a lot of tuna here lately, too, when all the cruise ships are out there. People are going out there every day and yeah. cleaning up on tuna. There's been a ton of them out there. Yeah. 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 Looking for structure, okay. someplace to hang out. They say the Bonita's up in the bay right now, too. Lots of Bonita. People have been killing it up in there with them. Yeah, I run out of here up and down the bay a lot. So yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of bonita, Spanish mackerel. Seeing them, you know, sky on the on the baits. There's a lot of bait in the bay right now. Yeah. Um, it's kind of cool. Sometimes on occasion you'll see like massive. You know when the the big kings are in the bay, when you'll see big schools of ladyfish and blue blue mm -hmm. fish. You know, going in there, you just you know they're they're cruising around right underneath there, right along the edge of the ship channel. Yeah. This is, so, this is what kind of bait do you use when you catch the tournament smoker <clears throat> and where and how do you get them? Now that's a million dollar question. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's all in at who you ask, you know, 99.9% of the people are fishing with, with, uh, with blue runners or, or mullet. And uh, a lot of, I have a captain that fishes with ballyhoo. He drags Ballyhoo. That's his. That's his life. Is Ballyhoo. I'm sure he's going to scream at me for saying that, but he's a Ballyhoo guy. Um, last year, when the uh, when the red tide went through and nobody could get live bait, someone said, "Hey, go get a ribbon fish." Um, God bless you for telling me about ribbon fish, but I'll never touch another one in my life. <laughs> I don't know what it is with those things. We we couldn't throw it at a fish to get it to bite. We, we tried using them. We tried using them in our crab traps, and the crabs wouldn't eat the damn things. But um, I think the ribbon fish is an East Coast thing. From my experience, it's blue runners or mullet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, like, ladyfish on the beach early in the yep. morning. Because, um, you know, they're not the easiest things to keep alive. But uh, years ago, we won the, uh, the SKA at Gators, um, the Suncoast Kingfish Classic. And that ate them, a uh, blue runner on a downrigger. Roughest day. We're in a 23 foot century. We'd been out at the 10 fathom. There was only one other boat out there. It was a Cape Horn or something. And we'd lose sight of it. I mean, it was just like, you know, go. so we didn't really have, didn't really have any bait. So, and we couldn't do, couldn't, we did had no business being out there Had a downrigger down and just another, like two flat lines out, cut the engine and we we're just drifting. And so the wind was blowing out of the North, typical Kingfish cold front north wind and it was blowing us towards the ship channel and all of a sudden that downrigger just bam just you know took off and sure enough up come this you know was that one was 39 pounds and uh which typically nowadays isn't going to win a tournament but it did in that one um because it was just so nasty there was just nothing going on but it was so rough we had to keep on going towards the ship channel tuck in behind a freighter that was coming in because there's no way we could have beat our way up to John's Pass. So, hopped in behind the freighter, followed it in underneath the, to the Skyway, and then ran the uh, the intercoastal up. So, that was on a Blue Runner. Then, a couple years ago, we got third at King of the Beach, and that just ate a hardtail. That was a cigar minnow. Um, I was up on a bow fighting a fish, and my buddy was starting to clear lines. And when he grabbed it and just kind of changed the pace of the bait, that other cigar minnow went. So and that one ended up being 42 pounds and something, you know, and it was wow. good for third. So, I mean, peanuts eat or elephants eat peanuts, right? So it's, it's, yep. you never, you never know, you know, if you could have the biggest bait or, or just a normal old cigar minnow, you yep. know, so it's just, who knows? Yeah. We use those too. We, we typically use whatever we can get at that point in time. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you hope you don't run out. <laughs> and can you tell me why the weather always knows when it's Kingfish Day that it's got to be 
horrible are the seas have to be four to six feet sometimes more why yeah <laughs> always always well i'll tell you what because it was king of the beach so that one with the 42 pounder it never works like this but to that day it did so we were out i don't give you everybody knows we were at the peaks mm -hmm. and fish hit we caught that one and we had that one in the boat we had a 38 pounder in the boat put lines back out we hooked a hammerhead Said, screw it, we're done. Nine o'clock, cranked up, running back in. We're sitting in the pool at 11 o'clock, chilling out, hanging out, because you can go to the king of the beach. You can take your fish by, yeah. by car. You know, you can truck them up. But it was just one of those perfect days. You know, how, how many times you're out there, man, I just wish that fish had hit and we could be done. And, That's you know, you're, you're, but that one time, you know, it it, it worked. It was crazy. Oh. What a day. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, we've been out there before when it's been... I don't know, at least six, six foot swells and you're just hanging oh, yeah. on. Oh, and you're like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Mother Nature's got a sick sense of humor. It really does. <laughs> yeah, what's that YouTube video? I love king fishing. <laughs> if you haven't watched it, yes, everybody needs to watch that thing. A little animated cartoon. Yeah. yeah. Lisa asked, what do, you, um, do you have any insider tips for preparing for the day out? Oh, lots of tips. <laughs> from, from from which aspect? Are you talking to someone who wants to go, that's going to go fishing with Reeling Freedom? Um, when oh, when a veteran goes it. fishing with us, they bring nothing. Um, yeah. All we tell them to bring is, is bring a rain jacket. And uh, if they want any alcoholic beverages to bring that, because we don't know what everybody drinks. But when veterans fish with us, they bring absolutely nothing. It doesn't cost them a dime. And they typically will go home with a shirt like this and a hat like this. Um, so, yeah. But when we go fishing, you know, obviously you hydrate for uh, for days before because you're going to get dehydrated on the water. So that's a big thing. And we tie lines for hours and days. So. Yeah. And weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, as you know. We need to absolutely. <laughs> My guys are prepping to. right now. Yep. You, yep. You, you, do, you literally, for tournaments, you do. You prep for weeks out. You go out fishing for bait uh, days before. Free fishing. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no last minute prep. I mean, the last minute prep is load your coolers <clears throat> with drinks and food. So, and I say a really freedom too. You know, we're a hundred percent volunteer. Um, Captain Gene Hammond works a full time job. I work a full time job. Danelle works a full time job. Um, we got Nick Martellano. He's on our board too as well. He works a full time job. Um, nice. Mike Stevens. He works. He works with us too. He works a full time job. So we make absolutely no money from Reeling Freedom. It's a hundred percent profit goes to the foundation to put veterans on the boats. Uh, we get paid nothing. Um, our payment is putting smiles on people and uh, putting them on the water because um, I believe that changes people's lives. Yeah. What a great cause, man. That's so cool. You guys, you know, came up with this. And thank you for your service too, man. That's thank that's you. Awesome. So, I guess if somebody's got a boat though and wants to take some veterans out, um, liability wise and stuff like that, if they got to be a licensed captain and 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 uh, and all no. that, or can can just a volunteer, you know, anybody can you, volunteer. Um, when when you go onto our website and you sign up, you sign a waiver, um, releasing us of all of all uh, liability. But basically, when you go fishing with a reeling freighting, you're just going out to have a good time on the water. Um, we are all licensed captains. However, it's not a requirement um, because when you get on the boat, the agreement is, hey, we're just going fishing. It's a bunch of guys going fishing. We're having a good time. Um, we do have insurance. We do have licenses. We do have all that good stuff. But um, at the end of the day, we're just going fishing. And um, and my goal is to send you home with fish. So that's what we do. Um, a lot of the captains we do use do have businesses. And um, and so they do run it as a business, but we do not run it as a business. I am a 50-ton master captain, but I don't do charters. Um, I don't let anybody pay me anything to go on my boat. Um, we may split the, split the fuel if we go to the middle grounds or something like that. Um, but typically, uh, people come on my boat. They're just going fishing and having a good time. Yeah. At least I just asked, how do you become involved to help? Um, basically, you know, the help that we look for is when we do our tournaments, like our yearly tournaments, and then we set up events because we do fish in the tournaments. So we typically need people to stand back and, um, help run the booth and sell our merchandise. Um, and just um, when we do the events, we help setting up and tearing down. So that's kind of where we need the help. And then we need captains to help get veterans out on the water. So <clears throat> you can sign up through the foundation uh, website. 
or you can we need we need doers we need yeah. doers we need mm -hmm. people that want to that want to stand up and help um i mean i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna throw people under the bus we have people that come out of the woodwork every day and say what can we do to help how can we help and then when it comes down to the rubber meeting the road and helping out they they're gone uh, but we need doers we need people that truly want to help out the cause and um and help it we do a lot with other nonprofits as well it's not all about really freedom it's about the cause uh, we do a lot of stuff with other veteran organizations that prevent PTSD. Um, on or off road is a uh, jeeping club. We do a ton of stuff with on or off road and um, they do the same thing we do. They, they provide therapy to veterans that need it. They do jeeping events and we put veterans in empty seats in their Jeeps. So they go off roading and get all muddy and dirty and climb rocks and do all kinds of crazy stuff with those guys. So it's not all about just fishing, you know, cause some people don't want to fish. They want to do something else. We also have shooting clubs. We'll go uh, up to some some ranges and, and go shooting. Um, we do whatever we can just to make people happy and have a good time. So we do all kinds of stuff. Oh, like Nick just asked a question about um, Marine Max. I know we're kind of all over the place, but it kind of all ties together with boating because we're all boaters. Um, Nick just asked if there's any plans for Abacos to reopen for vacations. Um, all I can say is it's in the works. So just be patient. We are getting our stuff back together to get over there. I don't have dates, but uh, it's coming soon without getting myself in trouble. <laughs> so we're excited. Things are moving forward. So, well, we were there briefly and then mm -hmm. uh, this. like talk about the ultimate bad timing, right? Mm -hmm. Then the hurricane came through. Was it Doreen? Yeah. Was that her name? Doreen? Was it Doreen that went through? I can't I remember. Think, we were there. We were there so. right before it happened too. Right before yeah, it was beautiful. It was July, yeah. We were there for the cheeseburger party. It was awesome. Yeah, we got to go over and take the boat out, the 44, and we spent, I think we were there almost nine, 10 days out on the 44. And just kind of, was. we were going around. We did the cheeseburger party. Um, I met Abby out there. Um, and we just kind of did some little bit of marketing and hung out. And then we kind of did a little bit of island hopping and, visited some of the local bars and it was fun we had a great time and then a week later i believe it was doreen that went through and just doubled it yeah so some some days at work are better than others right mm -hmm. yes Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just say i love my job i have the best job I in do. the world i, get to I don't know i like mine too <laughs> <laughs> I get to plan people's vacations and i get to go help people sometimes over there as well so like I'll be going, I believe looks like February to go lead one of these flotillas. So that's going to be super fun. Paul and I get to go do that. So standing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm a captain for Marine Max too. So they send me down to the BVIs every now and then to do a flotilla or they need a boat moved or something like that. They can call me cause I'm on the approved captain's list for Marine Max as well. Nice. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Super fun. So, so yeah. let's just kind of recap and we'll start wrapping this up. So Paul, okay. if you want to do the, the reeling freedoms thing and then just kind of, both of you go through your website and how people can get hold of you. Yeah. So reelingfreedom.com is at our website. Uh, we're a 501 C three nonprofit uh, charity. We provide no cost charters to disabled veterans or any veteran in need. Um, we don't limit it to just veterans. We also do first responders because um, a lot of those guys out there have issues too. I had a uh, therapist call me from villages one time that I went through captain school with. He said, Hey, I have a police officer that has some severe PTSD, got shot. He's got some issues. Would you take him fishing? I said, absolutely. So I don't discriminate. Anybody in need that's got some uh, some issues that wants some day on, a day in the water, just give me a call, send me an email, go to our website, reelingfreedom.com and sign up. We also have on Facebook, we have the Reeling Freedom fan page and uh, we do raffles on there with Yetis and other stuff to raise money for the foundation. Um, it's 100% payback out to the veterans. We don't make a dime. We all work a full-time job. So um, get on there and check it out, reelingfreedom.com. Absolutely. And then if you want to get some more information about um, vacations in the British Virgin Islands, uh, you can go to uh, marinemaxvacations.com. Uh, you can email me as well at danielle.gage at marinemax.com. Um, you can look it up that way and would definitely love to get you some more information. So outstanding. Yeah. Thanks. Go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. Hey, hey really quick. And if, if anybody is interested in sponsoring the foundation, um, we're always looking for sponsors. Um, some people, some corporations will come on and say, hey, can you take my executive team out fishing? I'll make a $5,000 donation to the foundation and then it'll put people on the water. 
So we have a lot of corporations make donations. We bring their corporate team out. We get them on the water. We have fish. And then they, in turn, pay for trips for veterans. Um, Fireside Pizza in Palm Harbor, they pay for a lot of trips. They're one of our biggest sponsors. Dubai and Brewing Company in Palm Harbor, they pay for a lot of trips. Um, Angler Armory Fishing Club pays for a lot of trips. Dylan Hubbard takes care of us. We had Captain Mike Anderson with Real Animals. They're really good to us. Florida Fishing Products, Bull Bay Rods. I mean, it's endless. We have a lot of support. Um, but if you want to sponsor anything in the foundation, give us a call. We are a 501c3, so it's 100% tax write-off. I know at the end of the year, people are looking for tax write-offs. So um, don't forget us over here at Reeling Freedom because we can mm -hmm. use all the support we can get. Absolutely. Yeah. All those people and companies you just mentioned, man, they're all just top notch. You know, they so, are. So support them, support you guys. Uh, I want to thank you for your time and everybody that was watching this. Um, you can check us out on Facebook, at YouTube, and all the other likely channels and places you can find us. Um, next week, we're going to be discussing uh, the getaways, and we're going to have Brock Trimble with us. Uh, hopefully, Nick gets his technical difficulties uh, squared away. And uh, But once again, everybody, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. And we'll see you out on the water soon. Thanks for having us. Have a good day.